Hello everyone, today I just wanted to do a quick YouTube video going over my bedroom space. If you found me over on TikTok, you would know this space a little bit more now. And I just thought I would kind of go over the details and take some time to run through how I develop the space over time to hopefully assist you kind of, you know, if you like this space and want to figure out how to do it on a budget, then this is the video for you. So as you can see with the room just generally, it's a very stock standard rental bedroom. Um, I think it was built in the 1960s, to be honest. Um, so the wardrobes are really basic. It has some like timber inserts in, this, in the middle. Then it also has like this little alcove at the top. So it's like very more mid-century than it is like 80s or 90s. But the carpet luckily got replaced before we moved in, which is great. So then we've got the ceiling mount over there. So basically you can see it's a stock standard room. The best thing was is that it was quite wide. So that was the benefit here. So when I started off in the space, I added in this rug. I've had this rug for a long time. Jute seagrass rugs are amazing because they add instant warmth to your space and they're not very expensive. They are a natural product, so they can stain easily. But if it's in your bedroom, you're not really going to spill anything on it. Like water is fine, but if you have like wine or something like that, probably wouldn't opt to have it in your dining space if that makes sense but it's perfect for living rooms and for bedrooms so we started off with the rug because i wanted it to <clears throat> take up the space and add warmth into the room because this is quite cool the paint is quite cool toned which means that it leans more blue than yellow so I wanted something warm to add in. And then we went in with this bed frame here. So this bed frame is from catch.com. You can also get it on Amazon as well. It's only like around $180 for a queen bed size, which is very cheap and very affordable. If you like things like your price point from Ikea, then this is definitely for you because this is probably cheaper than an Ikea front. But what I did to customize this and make it feel a little bit more expensive is I went in and I bought some plywood and then a day bed from a market I found. It was about $80 for this little day bed and I bought some plywood and cut down the seam and then slid the plywood in to make it turn into a little bed head and then rest it in between the mattress and the post if that makes sense so it was super easy easy to create and then i went over to Kmart and i bought some tablecloths and i created a bed skirt i think this is only one tablecloth it's a bed skirt that runs all the way around the bed, hiding the little dark shadows that could be like could appear, so it like reflects light, so it looks a little bit more custom and takes this unit from like a hundred and eighty dollar unit that could be cheap to something that would be a little bit more expensive without having to bust the budget. So overall, this is probably a bed that cost me two hundred and ten dollars, but if you were to look at a competitor's price, you'd be paying a couple of thousand. So that's my top tip for you. Then we move into the bedside tables. I went for something a little bit more traditional. Some nice blonde timber, just to add again that warmth, which should go tie in with the rug here. I really like the fact that it has a drawer because that's a little bit more practical. And I love the fact that it had the two tiers so you could style little vignettes on both surfaces. So with the sconces, I opted to get sconces because lamps are very expensive. Lamps can push you back $200 minimum each. Whereas a sconce, I bought these two from Amazon and I think it was about $70 for the two. So it's like, that's so affordable to get an effective look of like the look that you want. Um, without having to bust the bank. You can put uh, puck lights in them. I do have puck lights in them, but to be honest, I never use them because at night I only use this room to sleep. I don't really use it at night where I need a light. So it's because I get really nice light during the day. I don't need it as a light, but I love the fact that it just adds a little bit more height to the space without costing me heaps of money. Um, which is another thing about height. The reason why I love having the full poster bed is because it's taking up the real estate here. There's lots of like ceiling, wall. If you were to take this away and chop it off, it would just be, everything would be the same height and then there'd be no dimension up here and everything would just feel dwarfed, if that makes sense. It just would like sink down and it just wouldn't be interesting. So that's why this is so great because it's better than artwork to me because I personally find that artwork can kind of take over a space, which is great if you're a minimalist and you love an artwork and you sort of want to tell your style and how you feel about the space. But if you want the items around the room to kind of tell the story and artwork can kind of detract because a lot of people will just come in, see the artwork and then it's done. They won't, they'll be like, oh, I know what this space is. Whereas I don't want someone else's work to kind of define what the space is. I want to develop a space and add little bits and pieces that I can take out that bring a whole unit together. So moving on from that, talking about height, we move over to the window space over here. So with the window space, I opted to get a uh, seagrass 
I think it's a seagrass or a tan blind. It's a Roman blind because I like the fact that you could get blockage without blocking out the complete, like, I don't like it being complete block out. I also love it because it's adding, once again, adding in that warmth from the rug, and then we have the side table, and then we have the warmth up here as well. So just a continuation from floor to the middle wall and to the ceiling, creating cohesiveness roundward. So then, because this ceiling, because like this window isn't floor to ceiling, we need something to add and draw the eye back up and down. So that's why we flank the curtains on either end, just to kind of make the window appear bigger. Because if it wasn't, if it was like, you know, if it was from ceiling to floor, I probably wouldn't do the Roman shape, but because it is this one, that's why we have the Roman. And then we do the curtains to flank it on either side, because I hate the fact that it would be kind of shrunk and be like, oh, this is the window up. And then there's nothing else. We need something to kind of draw the eye back down. And then, of course, I went in and added some benches in here. So this bench here I picked up from Living Styles. And I also went over and reupholstered the top of it with a tablecloth that I got from H&M, which tied really nicely in with these pillars and cushions that I got from Freedom. And you can see there's a bit of a stripe notion going on throughout the space because I think that a little bit of pattern adds a little bit more interest. But a stripe is a classic, so it's not going to date anytime soon. A stripe is like basically a neutral, but it adds in a little bit more of an interest. Um, I like the fact that it's cast iron leg and then it has a linen top which ties in with the bed here which is cast iron bed frame and then linen with there and then also the same with the window how we have the black window frame to tie in with the black and then the black. So it's the same as I was saying with like the warm timber tones like here, here and here and then we have the black there, there and there and then we have the linen here, here and here and then we also go over to here where we have the black continuation over here so you don't have to have all your draw units being the same thing you know what I mean like they, these don't have to be timber because this is timber this black ties back into this unit here this unit here and this unit here you know what I mean so there's cohesiveness in the colors it doesn't have to be depicted by unit you don't have to say every draw unit has to be this timber all of my like um posts and legs have to be black because my bed is black you know we have this warm timber rough stool here the elm bench which i got from living styles again when they had a sale these things can cost thousands of dollars on antique stores they're basically made in indonesia they're very cheap and affordable but the markup on them to get them to be transported is a lot of money because i have to go through like thorough quarantining because of the timber but basically like i love the fact that i have this unit here and then this tray and then this like sort of volcanic rock pot because I feel like in a space you need to have things that are rough and organic to tie in with the natural fibers that have been refined like the linen all the way through to the really polished things like the brass and the iron do you know what I mean like you need something that's really rough and really smooth you've got to work in your textures because I feel like that really adds dimension and really elevates your space so that's why I opted with that. And I just love the fact that it sits really comfortably at the end of the bed here. It's not too much of something, which is something that I like to talk about. You know what I mean? Like we've got the ceiling here and then it stops here. There's something interrupting it. Then it drops down and then stops at the sconces. And then it drops down to a nice little vignette here with the pillows and then the... Um, bedside tables and then it drops down here again to the end of the bed and then it drops down here again to that little bench and drops down to the rug so we've got layers you know what I mean like levels layers going up the eye can kind of go in and like track everything and there's somewhere to look everywhere you go but because the color palette is cohesive it just feels like it works and it doesn't like interrupt too much it's it's still calming even though there's stuff going on in here so then we swing around to here and we have this mirror that I got from Kmart. So really affordable prices like this unit here is from Ikea and I just like upgraded it a bit by adding in these little details, like these little brass knobs from Bunnings, which are really affordable, which then I tie in again with the little brass candle holder here. So this is a really affordable unit. I think these are about 30 or $40 each. And then we have this unit here and it holds my shoes which also is a continuation, like I said, with the bed and then the window, which are getting some horizontal um, cohesion going on, if that makes sense. And then on this side over here, we just have the mirror, which is like a blonde timber mirror, because I already had this from my previous places, but I like the fact that it actually ties in really well with the 
bedside tables, like you can see. Now look, I could go in and opt to change the handles on my wardrobes, but because they're just like a silver, I just can't be bothered. It's just not worth it for me because these are quite small. And if I was to try and get um, replacements, I'd have to buy particular ones and it's just not worth it for me. So I would rather put more time into stuff that people see or like myself as well. Like it's not really about what everyone sees, but yeah, this is the overall space, guys. I hope you really found this informative about developing your own space. And, you know, I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions as to how I did anything or made anything or whatever, let me know and I'll be sure to do that. Thanks.